Hi everyone, this week we will be working on a professional cover letter as your assignment. So on your Google Classroom page you'll see this video that is kind of your explanation and your assignment sheet if you will, um, sample cover letters and also um, a job posting sheet that will look like this. Um, I wanted to just touch base with you on what your expectations are for creating a cover letter. Cover letters or letters of introduction is what they can also be called are sometimes the first way professionals get to understand who you are and it's kind of just a brief glimpse into why in the world they want to look at your resume or your job application further. So they need to be professional, they need to be interesting, and they need to highlight some of the activities and skills that you have that would work well for their job. So you will see a job posting sheet. I use this, um, I created this just using Google. If you just go in and type construction manager or construction job postings, it will actually show you, Google will take you right there with your location if you have it turned on and you will just get this kind of rotating thing that shows you um, careers in that field close to you. I have registered nurse pulled up here because I know several of you were thinking about registered nurse postings and some of you had some specialties in mind. So if you just scroll through here, you can actually find different ones. Um, so you take a look. Um, you can, if you push apply, you don't obviously have to apply, but sometimes if you click through a little bit further, they may give you a little bit more description. So this is where you will look. I've used your answers uh, from your survey last week that, and kind of tailored them down. So hopefully if you answered that, you should be taken to a page that has a little more specifics to it. Um, but back to the cover letters, I have provided you with two samples. There are all sorts of templates out there on the internet. I would just warn you against utilizing templates completely because some of them may not be formatted correctly or some people get into the habit of using templates and they don't change enough stuff. So if it's not the way you actually write or speak or actually some of the activities that you do, it may look badly on you eventually. So I would just use this kind of as a base for um, working from. So you in cover letters use what's called block letter format. So in block letters, obviously this right here would not be there. Your very top line with one inch margins and you probably need to use Times New Roman, although on here this is Arial, which is okay. Um, 12 font is important. You don't want it to be too big because it's just going to look a little goofy. So one inch margins, 12 font, Arial or Times New Roman is fine. Um, I know that Google Docs makes it Arial as it's kind of offset. Um, my hope is that you guys can save this digitally somewhere and utilize it in the future and just tweak a couple things personally or to the career that you use. That way you don't have to, you know, reinvent the wheel or cover letter every time that you apply for a different position. So um, the very top thing that you're going to see is the date. You're going to have two enters here, and um, this is going to be your contact information. So it'll be your mailing address, your phone number, and a I would also put a good email to contact under there. Do not use a school email and in the future I would not use like your secondary school email. Um, make sure and have a personal email that you keep things on that is professional. So it should be something like your name at gmail.com. Um, it is easy to start sending everything to a school email but those emails are not going to last. I still have things that are sent to me from K-State that I was like, oh, I probably should have had um, something else, um, a different email. So um, after you put your information there, you're going to space twice or enter twice. This is information of the person that you're sending this to. So sometimes you're going to have a specific name, but I think on most of these job postings that I want you to use for this, there is not a name provided. So what you're just going to do is try and provide the area and the address, okay? And that means instead of Dear Miss Bailey, you would put to whom it may concern. And I think this is a pretty good general thing to use um, when you're doing this, unless you do know a specific name, because you might have a committee looking at it instead of just one person. So you're, um, you would then enter twice again. The first paragraph is describing how you found out about this job posting. So you can see here it describes this letter in reference to the position that was listed through this area. Um, and then, you know, maybe explain just a little bit what you know about their um, business. Okay, second paragraph, this is the second or third paragraph here um, will be the 
meat of this, the information that you're going to give them about yourself, you're going to pull a couple specific activities or skills that you have to describe that may meet that job posting that you're talking about. Um, so this paragraph or paragraphs need to be really um, thorough. You don't want three pages. This needs to be kept to a page, but you need to have some good descriptors in there and it needs to meet some of the requirements. The final paragraph you have is going to be um, describing like, thanks for looking at this. Um, I would like further contact about it. I would be very interested in an interview. Um, and then kind of give a description of, please feel free to contact me at the number above or my email. Um, you might describe to them like, maybe you're available after five o'clock on most evenings or before a certain time. This is where you would describe that. And it just needs to be two or three sentences of, thank you for taking time to look at this. I've enclosed a resume. I'd love to talk to you further. Um, but of course, word it a little bit more eloquently than I just did there. You enter twice. You do a professional close of sincerely. Do four enters. Type your name out here because your signature, when you actually sign it, may not be legible. Um, so just FYI. And if you are enclosing other things for them to look at, type enclosure or enclosures at the bottom. So I've provided you two of these. If you utilize these templates, please adjust them correctly. Um, if you have any questions, please email me.